So here we are again, friends. Welcome again. This is episode 20. My goodness. We are still on John chapter 3, and this is 100 days of devotion and discipleship. In John chapter 3, we began reading from verse 1 and was speaking about here a man called Nicodemus. They say, now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are performing except God was with him. Verse 3, Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born again when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter the second time into their mother's womb and be born. Jesus answered, Verily I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the Spirit. Right? Flesh gives birth to flesh. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Flesh gives birth to flesh. But the spirit gives birth to spirit. That, that verse is a mouthful. Now, there is a conversation between the Lord and Nicodemus here. And it is clear that Nicodemus for his life is confused. He is confused to the core, and we will see how the Lord Jesus Christ challenges his confusion. It's that he says that your confusion is not fit for a teacher. You are too confused to be teaching. You know. And and it culminates the question, the back and forth about being born again culminates to this point where the Lord Jesus Christ says something that is effectively very important for us to capture today. Flesh is born from flesh. In other words, you cannot come into the kingdom of God and propose in the kingdom of God those things that are fleshly as though they are credentials in the kingdom of God. Oh my goodness, let me not go deeper into that. But that which is spirit is surely born from spirit. And this speaks to the mystery of rebirth. The mystery of rebirth. In other words, when you come into the Lord, you are not the same flesh you were. You are not of the same nature you were. Because that which is flesh was born of flesh, but that which you are coming into, which is spiritual, is surely born from the Spirit of God himself. So the first thing that happens when a Christian is born again, or when one comes to become a Christian, is that the first thing that happens is that the Holy Spirit regenerates them so that there is a birthing of a new spirit in them. So that they are coming alive. Hallelujah. Uh, so that which is flesh is born of flesh, that's the first carnal birth everyone gets into. But that which is spirit is born of the spirit. In other words, the same process is necessary to one being born into the Spirit. But it's a, it's, it's a process where it is the Spirit now who is bringing into life something in us that is not attributable to the flesh. Hallelujah. You should not be surprised at my teachings or saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. Now, the wind, yeah, the, the word wind is, is the same word, particularly in the Greek, pneuma, pneuma, breath, wind, spirit. Same word, pneuma. Hallelujah. In the, in the Hebrew, it is a little bit distinguished. But I want you to understand that when he's speaking about wind here, it's again speaking about the spirit. That the spirit of God is the one who chooses whom he shall bring to life. He says, the Spirit of God blows wherever it pleases. And this is one of the teachings that emanate then, or rather the, 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 the disciples and the apostles build upon this teaching to speak about election and selection. You should not be surprised at my teaching. You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it is going. This is the mystery of rebirth. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. In other words, you cannot pinpoint even how it happens. 
as you lift your hands, as you are convinced in your heart, as you pour out your heart to the Lord and say, Father, save me, a Messina, right there and there, without you noticing, there is rebirth that takes place. And this is what he's talking about. That you cannot see, you cannot see where the spirit is coming from. Neither can you tell whether it's coming from the north to the south. But what you can be guaranteed of is that there is a rebirthing of something new when the spirit of God begins to move. How can this be, Nicodemus asked? You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things. Verily, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and we testify of what we have seen, but you people still do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How can you believe if I speak of heavenly things? Oh, my God. No one who has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up a snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that whosoever believes in him may have eternal life in them. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, and whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whosoever believes in him is not condemned, but, that, but whosoever does not believe stand condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does not who does hate the who, who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever loves the truth comes to the light so that it may be seen plainly that which that what they have done uh, has been done in the sight of the Lord. Let's stop it there. Please read these things for yourself. I, I try, but I'm, I may not be a good reader all the time. Oh, my good God. What a word. What a word. Because when the Lord Jesus Christ begins to speak to Nicodemus, there seems to be confusion. But I love how he builds up to become very doctrinal in what he speaks about. And he really drives the point at this level. That part of the human nature is that there is always fear with those who love evil or those who are doing evil deeds. In other words, except the Lord calls out those who are in sin, the reality is that they will not come to the light. And that's what he's speaking about here. This is what he actually is speaking about. That those who are in sin, and I want to extend this even further because here I'm speaking to believers. Those who are in habit of sinning within even the confines of the church are likely to hide from the presence of the Lord. Fearing that that which they are doing, be it in secret or publicly, will be exposed by the shining of the light. Haven't you seen that when you are in doubt of your work with the Lord, be it that you are sinning or be it that you are condemned in your heart because you have fallen into sin, what usually happens is that you are unable to approach the light. In other words, you can't pray alone. You can't uh, sing hymns unto the Lord in praise and worship. You are unable to fellowship with your father in fear that the light will expose that which you are hiding. And this is what the Lord is speaking about. That the problem of sin is that sin confines you in perpetual darkness. Unless the Lord himself brings in the light, unless the Spirit brings in the light, those who are dead remain dead. Oh my God. So what is critical for the church of God in South Africa and in Africa and the world today is that 
The only thing that will transform people is not good stories about Jesus. The only thing that will transform people's life is not good stories about how the church is given to the poor. What will transform people's life is not our ability to amass wealth and build big buildings. What will transform people's life is when the light shines. It's when we take the light of the word of God to the ends of the world. It's when we take this light and bring it to people's hearts so that it may shine on them. And so that sin is exposed and people are regenerated in the word of the Lord. It is important because what we see constantly is the other things of the church which may not constitute always the preaching of the gospel. And of course I'm a pastor. And um, uh, my mentor, one of my mentors says to me that Maluleke, you must be pastoral. I'm, I'm, I'm a pastor and I'm pastoral. In other words, I do not... I do not cast down the same structure I'm trying to build up. So it is not out of, of, of this criti destructive criticism that I criticize our, uh, our insensitivity to the word of the Lord. But it is rather out of love that I, I would urge the church to prioritizing again the word of the Lord. And I will charge you, child of God, to prioritize the light of the word of the Lord, even in your life. Instead of hiding, let the light shine. Instead of, of staying in your dark corner, let the light shine on you. So that as the light shines, as the light shines, there would be a rebirthing. There would be a sanctification that can only happen by the word of the Lord. I love that the Lord Jesus Christ builds up to the concept of he so loved the world from this point. From light must shine. The word must be declared. The spirit must be at work. It is only when we understand the work of the Holy Spirit that the verse, John chapter 3 verse 16 comes to life. It doesn't come to life unless we understand the work of the Holy Ghost to regenerate us and bring us to be alive in the kingdom of God. He may, he may have loved the world, but unless he can bring the world to liveliness in his kingdom, the love to the world remains in vain. So it is at this juncture that the Lord Jesus Christ, speaking to the man Nicodemus, says to him, I tell you the truth, you must be born again. I tell you the truth, you must be born again. Amen.